Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protect version 8111. I'll be showing you how in the Operations Center you can now create a copy of a directory or on-premise cloud container storage pool out to tape and VTL. This will be a fully rehydrated copy. Clients will also be able to restore directly from this copy that's out on tape. Unlike with Protect Storage Pool, where the data was written deduped out to the tape and it had to first be restored back to a directory container pool before a client could utilize it. This new method of making a copy to tape is the preferred method and deprecates the older Protect Storage Pool method. We are going to be utilizing the new define storage rule with the action type of copy or no copy. And then, of course, you can also create sub rules to go along with the parent rule. So I'll be showing you that as well. I'll also show you how when you create this copy storage rule, it will first look at any tiering storage rules that are set up for that directory container, and it will not tier until the copy storage pool has run. In this demo, I'll be showing you through the Operations Center. I also have a demo where I show you using the command line. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. From the Operations Center dashboard, click on Storage and then Storage Rules. First, you're going to create a new storage rule, so click on Plus Create Rule. Choose the rule type. This is going to be a copy rule. Notice that this is also where you would set up tiering rules. Set Active to No. The target storage pool needs to be previously set up, and it can either be a tape or VTL copy pool. So we're going to choose Copy Pool the source Spectrum Protect container storage pool that can either be a directory or on-premise cloud container storage pool. Choose a name for the rule. We're going to call it copy container pool. We're going to choose to have all data sent. Now you could choose specify by sub rule. For the max processes, we're going to choose eight, and this has to be consistent with the number of drives that you're going to be able to write out to. You can then choose to set up a daily start time and a max limitation on how long the process should run. Click Create. You will see that we got a warning that they had to reduce the max number of processes because we don't have eight drives. So go ahead and click Close. Back on the Storage Storage Rules page, you'll see the new storage rule that we just created. You'll notice that the status, it has not run yet. And you will see when it is scheduled for. Now, if you don't want to wait for the scheduled run to go, you can click on Run Now, and this will kick it off immediately. So go ahead and click Run Now, and then Close. You'll see that it now shows up with the status of running. If you want to go to the server, you can double click on that and see the active tasks, and you'll see that a copy storage pool is running out there. You can also see in the activity log below that it's showing, for instance, that the scratch volumes are being mounted and that data is being written out. If we go back to Storage, Storage Rules, double click on the rule, we'll now see the 14-day history of this rule. And since it's just run today, it'll just show one day's worth of history. And we can hover over the workload. Since it's still running, the only thing that'll show up is the workload and not the amount of data that was actually copied. Okay, once the run has completed, we can either double click on the rule or go into details. And now you can see that the workload and copy amount are given in the bar graph and there is a status of normal shown underneath it. You can also go into the detailed information on the left hand side. And if you open up recent history, you can also see there the amount of data that was copied and the start and end times. Now new for the storage rules, you can actually click through to the activity log. You'll see all the activity log messages associated with this copy to tape job, including tape mounts. Okay, we'll close out of the activity log. Now if you wanted to schedule this to run automatically or make updates to a schedule, if you click on properties, you can then activate the schedule and make any changes to the time. If you go to the overview page, you'll see that on the bottom right, it also shows the status of the storage rules, including if any are running. 
Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is create a sub rule. So sub rules provide granular control by specifying exceptions to the parent storage rule for one or more client. And the way to do this is from the storage, storage rules page, select the parent rule and then click on plus create sub rule. The first option you have is to pick a different tape technology to have this sub rule write to. We're gonna go ahead and choose the VTL this time. Next, you'll give this sub rule a name. You can adjust the data to be copied, either all the data for these clients or no data will be copied, and you can set the max processes. Next, click on plus add, and you can choose either individual clients or VM name pattern clients. And now you'll choose the individual clients or VMs that should go out to this alternate storage pool. And then we're gonna click create. Okay, now if you click on the parent rule name, and on the left-hand side, you can choose sub rules, you'll now see that one new sub rule there. If you click on the client view, this view shows you all of the clients who have data in the container and are by default part of the parent rule. It also shows you if a sub rule has been set up for those clients. And you'll see here we have two clients part of this individual sub rule. You can choose another client to add to a sub rule. So choose the client, then click assign sub rules, choose the sub rule you want to assign to, and then click assign sub rule. So now you'll see we have three clients assigned to this one sub rule. If you wanted to create another sub rule, go back to storage, storage rules, click on the parent rule and then create sub rule. This time we are going to have a sub rule that does not copy any data. So it doesn't matter which the tape pool you use because we're not copying anything. We're gonna call the sub rule do not copy sub rule. And for the data to copy, we're choosing no data. We're then gonna add some individual client whose data we don't want copied over. We'll choose all of these and click add client. And then we'll click create. Now, if you go back to the parent rule and look at the clients, you'll see that we have two sets of sub rules showing up for two different sets of clients. Each client can only belong to one sub rule per parent rule, but unlike tiering, for copy rules, it is possible to have multiple copy parent rules and then the same clients in each of those parent rules and their sub rules underneath them. On this copy storage rule page, you can also sort on the different headers for these columns. So for instance, if you choose action type, you could see all the no copies first versus if you chose sub rule or target pool. So going back to storage, storage rules page, another new thing that was added in 8.1.11 is the ability to see the status of a storage rule simply by hovering above it. So for instance, if we hover over this canceled backup dedupe pool, we'll get an explanation of what happened and what it's bringing up is that's taken from the worst result of the parent or sub rules. And so in this case, we can see that the sub rule was canceled by an administrator so that the, so the status shows up as canceled for this entire rule on the overview page. This status was also added for tiering rules. So if we hover over this Tesla tier rule, we see a message about it not running. And in this case, it didn't run because the copy storage rule associated with this same container had not yet run. And so it is set up that your tiering will not occur until the copies have run. And that's why we're seeing that failure. For sub rules, we also have additional information. So if you go to sub rules, in this case, click through to the non-VMS sub rule. If you hover over the status of that bar, it will give you an overview of what happened and why a warning status was achieved on that copy. And then if you go over to the left-hand side and click on recent history, you can see the correlating messages about what happened and why this copy did not finish. You can mine the activity log by clicking there and it'll take you directly to the errors associated with that. In this case, it had to do with not enough mount points. 
So in summary, I've shown you how to use the Spectrum Protect Operations Center to create a new storage rule to create copies of either directory or on-premise cloud container pools out to either tape or VTL. This copy on tape can then be restored directly back to the Spectrum Protect clients. I also showed you how to define subrules, and I showed you the new status you'll be able to gain about the storage rules by simply hovering above the storage rule status bar. Thank you very much.